All right. Well, good evening. Welcome back to our Friday night Bible study on the faith of Jesus. We're moving on to uh, our topic tonight, which is what the Bible teaches about communication with God. And it uh, should be an interesting study. Before we dive into that, though, let's pause for a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come together to uh, study your word. We thank you that we are able to do this. Uh, some of us here at the church, some people uh, online through Zoom, some may be joining us later. We ask that you'll be with the normal members who are with us, normally with us, who are not here tonight due to situations uh, in their families. Uh, watch over them and bring them back next week. We ask you'll send your spirit to be with us. Guide us in this study, Lord. Thank you for asking in Jesus' name. Amen. So what the Bible teaches about communication, I want to start, start off with a question. How do you develop a relationship with someone? You have to talk to them. Not to them, but with them. You have to, you have to talk with them, right? Before you can do anything. Spend some time with them. Spend some time with them, yeah. If you never say hello, kind of hard to yeah. establish any kind of relationship. All right. So, and then you have to spend time with them. You've got to show interest. Show interest. You have to get to know them. And they also have to get to know you. So, the question here is we're going to do that, right? How do we do that with God? Well, let's, let's start off first of all with, you know, how important is it that we do that? Uh, and, uh, the answer I think we'll find here is in Luke 13, 27. And Jerry, I'm going to let you lead us off tonight. All right. Uh, Luke 13, 27. But he will say, I tell you, I do not know you where you are from. Depart from me, all you workers of iniquity. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth when you see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, and yourselves thrust out. All right. Thank I think you. I read a little bit more. That's okay. <laughs> you got the gist of it. Of course, this was, uh, you know, Jesus was, was talking about a parable here, but he's talking about people uh, who will try to say that, hey, they did all these things in his name and all that. Uh, and he says, I don't know you, right? They they never develop that kind of relationship with him. And notice there, it says in verse 27, uh, as I tell you, I do not know you, where you are from. And then he says, Department, depart from me, all you workers of iniquity. So the, the people who don't develop that relationship are lumped right in there with workers of iniquity. That sounds like it might be a little bit harsh, but um, I mean, if you really think about it, sin is often viewed as a separation from God. Right? The only way to restore that separation is to establish that relationship and rebuild that. If you've never done that, then you're still living in sin and he can't have you in his kingdom. So that's, that's why it's so important to develop that relationship and to learn how to communicate with God. Now let's talk about how God communicates with us because we already, already mentioned it's a two-way street. We have to communicate with each other. So how does God communicate with us? Through his word. Through his word, right? Through the Bible or some other ways. Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, right? We, we get... Uh, uh, moved by the spirit the, the spirit will bring things to the mind the spirit will often um make impressions and hey i think for some reason we'll make it turn someplace we've never gone before that's a, usually spirit leading any thoughts jerry well uh as we pray a lot of times we'll have specific prayer requests and as those requests are answered, God is communicating with us and he's listening 
to our prayers and responding by guiding us in a, a certain direction or having those prayer requests uh, taken care of. Yeah. Sometimes I got always answers prayer. And sometimes right. his communication is in the way he answers that prayer because it's not always the way we anticipate. And it's not always the answer we want. <laughs> but but that's a good way. Uh, God does speak to us still through nature. Yes. Um, lots of ways uh, he does that. I mean, we see evidence of him as the creator in nature. Uh, lots of indicators there uh, that shows that intelligent design. Uh, so those are some, some good ways that God communicates with us. God has in times past spoken directly the to his, the prophets uh, through audible words. Now, he doesn't do that with us today because he doesn't need to because he's that's why we have this. Right. There's no need for that. Back then, they didn't have this. They didn't have the Bible. Uh, so that was how God communicated with them. And now he told us what we need to know. Get to know him and it's all right here in his word. Now, how do we communicate with God? We've got two texts here. Cole's going to read Daniel 9, 3, and then tie in. If you have Acts 1, 13 and 14. Let's start with Daniel 9, 3. Daniel 9, verse 3. Then I set my face toward the Lord God to make requests by prayer and supplications with fasting, sackcloth, and ashes. Here we see Daniel is doing what? Praying. He's praying. praying. And is he doing this by himself or is he in a group? Or? Looks like he's by himself. himself. Looks like he's by himself. All right now let's look at Acts 1, 13 and 14. When they had entered the city, they went up to the upper room where they were staying. That is, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus and Simon the Zealot, and Judas the son of James. These all with one mind were continually devoting themselves to prayer, along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. All right, now, what were they doing in the upper room? Praying. 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 How many people were there? By more than we got. <laughs> oh, yeah. We don't know exactly. Right. The women. The women but were represented. If you go down. If you, there's more women than men in our meetings. If, if you go down to verse thir uh, 15, the very next verse says, In those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the oh, disciples. Yeah. Altogether, the number of the names was about 120. So here they are in the upper room. About 120, most of them women, right? Yes. Yeah, that's what she's saying. That's what I'm saying. So that's a big crowd. So we communicate with God individually. Mm -hmm. We also communicate with God corporately as a group. Both are very important. Both are very important. Now here it's it's talking about communicating through prayer. Now prayer can be done a number of ways we're going to get into prayer a little bit later but it's not always just the eyes closed down on your knees hands folded praying I didn't do that on my way to work today <laughs> praying praying is simply talking to god okay talking to him we're going to discuss what do we talk about there's some different ways we can pray uh I frequently pray while I'm driving. Mm -hmm. I do keep my eyes open yeah. and my hands on the wheel. Yeah. So it's not like this. That was me this morning. <laughs> I was and a lot of times I'm praying for the people who are driving in the other cars around. Me. <laughs> <laughs> and some of them really need that prayer. <laughs> but uh, so there's lots of ways we can pray. But what is prayer? Let's go to First Samuel, since there's just four of us tonight small group because of you know what's going on with the different family uh i'll read this one also a longer verse i have some 
Can you all? All right, 1 Samuel 1, verses 9 through 15. So Hannah arose after they had finished eating and drinking in Shiloh. Now Eli the priest was sitting on the seat of the doorpost of the tabernacle of the Lord. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed to the Lord and wept in anguish. Then she made a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, you will indeed look on the affliction of your maidservant and remember me and not forget your maidservant, but will give your maidservant a male child. Then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life and no razor shall come upon his head. And it happened as she continued praying before the Lord that Eli watched her mouth. Now Hannah spoke in her heart, only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore, Eli thought she was drunk. Pause just a minute, I got it, buddy. All right. Okay. Um, so Eli thought she was drunk. So Eli said to her, how long will you be drunk? Put your your wine away from you but hannah answered and said no my lord i am a woman of sorrowful spirit i have drunk neither wine or intoxicating drink but have poured out my soul before the lord all right so in this case what was prayer what was hannah doing praying for a son yeah. praying for a son but it was more than just asking uh, for something. What did it say here in verse 15? She poured out her soul. She poured out her soul before the Lord. She didn't hold anything back. And that's good communication, right? Hopefully, uh, you know, if you're married, you have that kind of communication with your spouse where you, you, you know, you don't keep things in, bottled up. A lot of couples... Uh, they get into marriage because they have all those happy, good feelings, and they think it's all supposed to. So when things start to go wrong, they they are not really wrong because we're human. There's going to be bumps. When those bumps come along, they just keep it bottled up, and that causes problems. So here, she was a faithful follower of God, and she's just pouring out, pouring out her soul. She already has a relationship with Him where she's comfortable doing that. And notice here. She was praying silently. Mm -hmm. Now her lips were moving, but she was praying silently. All right, so now let's look at the next one. Uh, I know where we see you joined us. Are you able to hear us? Muted. Okay. Hi, Bob. Yeah, yes, I can hear you. I'm okay. Still, I'm still um, just getting, I just got home. So. Okay. All right. Perfect. Well, we'll, we'll keep going here on the next set. I'll, uh, I'll may have you read something. We'll have Jerry okay, read this thanks. one though. Can you, can you read Matthew six verses five through eight, Jerry? Yes. <clears throat> and when you pray, you should not, you shall not be like the hypocrites for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets and they may, that they may be seen by men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut your door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Therefore, do not be like them, for your father knows the things you have need of before you ask him. All right. So here, kind of giving us a description of what prayer isn't, right? Right. right so for one, it's not just vain repetition. No. You know, go do 15 Hail Marys. That's not prayer. <laughs> <laughs> That's not prayer. You know, you, or, or people who, who get up and make grand flowery speeches in public. And, you know, when I, I get someone like that, I'm in church, he keeps me on my knees for 20 minutes while he's using these long flowery phrases. I'm like, brother, who are you trying to impress? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. 
you're not impressing God and you're sure not impressing the congregation. <laughs> distracted. Yeah, especially in the age of cell phones. I mean, it's, you know, prayer should be direct. I mean, you should, um, and, it's, and it's all about communicating with God, not trying to impress the people around you. Right. That's what it's all about. All right. And notice here it says, when you pray, go into your room, shut your door. You know, it's talking about do it in private. Um, you know, if you're going to be talking about you know, forgiveness for specific sins and things, that needs to be done in private. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, please do that in private. You know, I don't, unless you have wronged me in some way and you want my forgiveness, I don't need to know about your, your, your sins. Um, I know you've sinned, you're, you're human. <laughs> so that's all I need to know. Right. It reminds you of the movie, The War Room, where she went into the closet and wrote on stick of notes and everything, her prayer requests and prayed mm -hmm. earnestly in that room to God. Yeah. Absolutely. Now I do have... Um, Part of my daily Bible study routine, uh, I did. There's a guided prayer thing that I, I do on the U version, the Bible app. I share that guided prayer, but but that's just a conversation starter that you use. That's not something. That's not your whole prayer. If that's your whole prayer. Then you know you're not really yeah. praying. But if you're, now I share that out there so that people who maybe don't have a, a way of Mm -hmm. really knowing how to get started i, I get it's something different every day yeah, so you can like a devotional book. i'd like a devotional book yeah, yeah. to kind of just get the conversation get started mm -hmm. um but and notice here he's not saying there's anything wrong with public prayer in fact we right. we've already read one verse where it was public prayer uh we do our congregational prayer every week people bring up prayer requests uh, we pray for the church as a whole, things of that, but that shouldn't be long. And because, you know, don't keep some of us, our, our knees aren't what they used to be. <laughs> you no, know, don't don't keep us down there too long. We might not be able to get back up. But uh, so there's nothing wrong with public prayer, but you need to understand it's communicating what you need to communicate to God. It's not about trying to impress the people around not to draw attention to yourself and how educated you are. No. <laughs> Prayer should never be about draw, drawing attention to yourself. Uh, just like preaching shouldn't be uh, drawing attention to yourself. That's why I, I know I use a lot of personal examples when I get up there because I, it's it makes it relatable, but it's not drawing attention to me. It's, it's all for God. Okay. Now. What do we pray about? What kind of things do we take to God? As you can see, this is a, a pretty good size list, size list. There are way more examples of, in the Bible that we could use of what people pray for. But um, let's start here. Cherry read last. That's right. All right. So we'll go. Nicole. You can read Philippians 4, 6. We'll just go down the line. And then uh, I'll have Tyann read. We're going to go Philippians, then James 1, 5. And oh, row by, we're going to go row by row. Mine aren't that way. I redid them. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's all right. I took the uh, returns out. The giving more space. I don't do that. Yeah. So I can get it on two yeah, days. you can do that. That's why I send it out in the editable yeah. form. You, you can, want me to do James? Yeah, you'll do James. All right, Nicole, you do Philippians 4, 6. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. All right, so there's actually a couple of things in here yes, for prayer. Thanksgiving. So the very first thing it brings up is Thanksgiving. So Thanksgiving is things you're thankful for. Mm -hmm. Right, And hopefully you have something that you're thankful for. If you can't think of anything that you're thankful for, thank God you have a pulse. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's a starting point. If nothing else, be thankful for that. 
Every day above the ground is a gift, right? And then the second thing it says, it says, let your request be made known to God. So your request. Now, that's pretty broad. Yeah. You know, what kind of requests can we be praying for? I think it's pretty wide open. Health. Pretty much wide open. Health, yeah. right? Uh, you patience. Can, patience. Patience. Every single day on my way to work. I think that's actually on the list. Oh. On this list. God will test you. Oh, yeah, he will test you. Uh, yes, yes, he does. <laughs> God will test you if you pray for patience. But I also pray, I say I pray for patience, but I also ask for him to give me the knowledge and the wisdom I need to, to deal with the children in my care. Yeah. The requests, they can be personal requests for yourself. These can be requests for other people. Mm -hmm. uh, these could be requests we do corporately for the church as a whole, mm -hmm. or we pray for the nation, um, our leaders, things of that nature. Now let's look at James. Well, well, the thing that I liked about it, Bob, is uh, the first little bit. It says, be anxious for nothing, meaning that God is in control and we need in our prayers and our requests to give him control because he knows what's best for us mm -hmm. and for the situation and for what we're praying for. Yeah, that's a good point. And, and of course, the uh, this kind of implies here when he tells you to be anxious for nothing and to bring your request to him. So once he has those requests, that's on God's plate now. It's off yours. Right. It's on his plate. Let, let him worry about it and instead of you. All right. James 1.5. Is that me? No. Is it? No. I've read Philippians. She did Philippians. It's you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's you, Tyan. Like, oh, but if any lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all generously without reproach, and it will be given to him. All right. Now, how many of us need wisdom? All of us. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> does, right? <laughs> Fortunately, there's the answer. You know where to get it now. All right. And we should ask for that daily <laughs> that is something you need all the time yes all day long all right so we can pray for wisdom um let's go to daniel uh are you able to read for us nora yes i am all right perfect if you can go read daniel 4 verses 34 and 35 okay all right past it and at the end of the time i nebuchadnezzar lifted my eyes to heaven and my understanding returned to me, and I blessed the Most High and praised and honored him who lives forever. For his dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom is from generation to generation. All the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. He does according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth. No one can restrain his hand or say to him, what have you done? All right, now notice here, Nebuchadnezzar is praying because he says, understand and return to me. I bless the Most High and praised and honored him. So what kind of things was Nebuchadnezzar praying about here? Praise. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Praise. Praise got his mind back. Often wondered how much does he remember from I those know. seven years? Uh, don't know. Praise. All right, but he was praising God. He's honoring. He's honoring God, honoring and this whole prayer is all about God. So it's it's perfectly fine. Sometimes you don't have any specific requests, and you just want to praise God. Oops, I evidently bumped the cable about that you just want to praise god that's fine yeah. throw that in there nothing wrong with just spending time telling god how wonderful he is mm -hmm. and those of you married you ever had your spouse come in and just spend five ten minutes telling you how wonderful you are i do that did either of you yeah, i do that nicole wants to know what i did <laughs> <laughs> oh you've been a while 
Honestly, it's been a while since I've done that to you too. Yeah, so it's. I, mean, I have done it before. Yeah, but it, it's it's <laughs> one of those things. It's good. It's good for a relationship to pray someone or now I don't know, five, 10 minutes, maybe a little excessive yeah. for us, for God, I could spend five or 10 minutes sure. and not repeat myself going over praises for him. But, uh, but for humans, that might be a little, a little much. All right. Now let's look at John, John 15, verse seven. And Jerry, can you read that one? Sure. If he abide in me there if you abide in me and my words abide in you you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you all right so this gets back to requesting but notice it says here there's there's a condition and a guarantee now what is the condition uh, we have if to you abide, abide in me abide in if you abide in him and his words abide in you. Now, do we know what abide means? Yeah. I was to, to be a part of. Pretty much to be a part of, right? Uh, to be kind of entwined in, in it, it's more than just being near or kind of Hanging out. Having the same desires and wants. And mm -hmm. It's it's something. Yeah, it's it's it implies kind of an intimate relationship, yes. right? So, but if you have that kind of intimate relationship, he says here, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. Now, how can he guarantee that? Well, for one, he's God. He can do whatever he wants, oh, right? Yeah. But two, if you have that kind of intimate relationship, you're gonna want, you're going to desire the same things he's going to desire for you. Mm -hmm. You're going to ask for the things he wants to give you. Right. And prayers like that, the the answer is generally going to be yes. Now it may be yes, but not quite yet. You're not. We're. That we're going to do that, yes, definitely, but maybe not right now. It may be uh, a week or two because we don't know all the circumstances. But you're asking for the things he wants to give you. He will generally give those to you. All right, so now let's look at James. I'll read this one. Five of us now, but I'm still, we're still going to stay in the reading. James 5, all the way to Revelation. James 5, verse 14 and 15. Have to turn the page. All right. So, is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. There's a couple of things we need to talk about in this one. First of all, what are they praying for? Someone who's sick. So we're praying, praying for someone who's healing. sick. For healing. So we're praying for healing. Right? This verse also implies they're praying for more than just healing. Right? When you're anointing uh, with oil, that oft often means you're consecrating you're setting something aside for the Lord. Uh, and it says here, the prayer of the faith will save the sick. Notice he didn't say will heal the sick. He said will save the sick. So we're talking not just about physical healing, but spiritual healing. The ultimate goal, of course, is to save that person's soul so that he can be in God's kingdom. Now, I did say before, you know, God always, you know, when someone prays for healing, they're, they're going to be healed. The question is not if, the question is when, right. right? The question is when. Some people, it's right now. Some people, it's say maybe after a surgery or two, or maybe after a few months, you'll get better. Some people, it's not until Jesus comes down and calls you out of the grave. Right. And, then, and then he heals you and restores you. 
But the ultimate concern is the Lord is to heal your soul. God's not interested in having a, a planet full of healthy sinners. Right. right? <laughs> he, wants, he wants a planet full of saved people. But he does heal. Right. We've, we've had plenty of instances. There's plenty of uh, recorded instances where people have been healed miraculously after prayer. It does work. We just have to keep in mind that God's desire is goes beyond that physical healing. So when we pray for someone's healing and and they um, get sicker or maybe even die, they don't get better. Uh, it doesn't mean God didn't answer the prayer. And I and it's a shame they're not with us tonight. But I know uh, Gary and Kim. And we were praying, uh, praying for Gary's brother Brian had the brain uh, the brain cancer brain tumor. He ended up passing. Why they're not with us tonight? But uh, Gary told us something. I think it was Wednesday night at prayer meeting that uh, his brother came to know the Lord and accept the Lord. Mm -hmm. And again, it was all about saving his soul. And he feels confident that he's going to see his brother again one day. And when he does, that tumor will be gone. Yeah. So that's what that is really all about. So those two things. Uh, you have physical healing. We still want to pray for that because God does still heal people. And we want to pray more importantly for that spiritual healing. And now let's turn to Job uh, 42.10 and I'll go back to Gary for this. Job 42.10. <clears throat> and the Lord restored Job's losses when he prayed for his friends. Indeed, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. All right, notice here. What, did, what was Job praying for? His friends. His friends. His friends. His friends, yeah. He was praying for his friends. So this is, uh, and there's plenty of examples in the Bible of intercessory prayer. People pray for other people. Moses did it a lot. Daniel did it. Those are some really good examples we have there. And here we have Job. And notice that Job was blessed after he prayed for someone else. Yeah. Funny how God works that way. All right, so we want to be sure that we're praying for other people. It didn't always be just about us. Uh, we should be praying about, we should be taking our concerns to God, but we should also be praising God. We should be praying for other people. Uh, for like example here, when we're praying for, uh, when the elders come and they pray for someone to be healed, things of that nature. All right, so now let's go back to Daniel. And Nora, can you read Daniel 9.20? Daniel 9 20. Now, while I was speaking, praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel and presenting my supplication before the Lord, my God, for the holy mountain of my God. So what was the first thing it mentions here that Daniel was praying? What was he praying about? Yes. He was confessing yes. his sin. Confessing now, the sin. interesting thing is, of all the humans in the Bible, Daniel is the one human. We have no record of any sin written down. Now, we know he's... Enoch. Well, Enoch, okay, yeah. Well, we don't really have... We only have a few verses, Enoch. There's a whole book on Daniel. And in that whole book, not one time does it uh, mention anything about Daniel committing a sin. Now, we know he's human. And Daniel does, the book of Daniel does show that he has the same human frailties he could deal with. He has mm -hmm. doubts, things of that nature. He has fears, but, but yet it says here that Daniel, who is probably as, as close to a perfect example other than Jesus, we can find in the Bible, uh, still he is confessing his sin. And then he goes on to confess not just his sins, but who else? Uh, Israel's sins. The sins of his people, the sins of his nation. So here he's praying for 
the people. Now, have has the whole nation repented from their sins? No. No. No, no they haven't. Daniel knows this. He is praying for forgiveness. He's like, God, I know they have it, but please bear with them. Uh, he's interceding on their behalf. And we should do. Too. And we we're can. Told to pray for our children, giving their sins. Absolutely. And when we uh, when we pray for our country, a healing, we pray for our leaders to act like adults for a change. <laughs> you know, wouldn't that be nice? That would be so nice. Um, things of that nature. We know they haven't gotten their act together, but we're hoping that still God will work on them and continue to bear to be patient with them and to bring that about. Right. Now let's go to Psalms 32, 3 through 6. Nicole's going to read that one. Psalm um, 32, verses 3 through 6. But I kept silent as my bones grew old, through my groaning all the day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My vitality was turned into the drought of summer. I acknowledged my sin to you, and my iniquity I have not hidden. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. For this cause, everyone who is godly shall pray to you in a time when you may be found. Surely in a flood of great waters, they shall not come near him. All right. So what was David praying about here? Um, sin. Again. Yeah, it's a sin. His You'll find that a lot in the Psalms yeah. where David is praying for forgiveness for his sin. Now, David, you know, we know he's a, uh, a man after God's own heart. But he was a man who committed a lot of sins. There's a his faults are boldly recorded for all to see. Yeah. But he always repented when he said he gives me hope. You know, I could I, I don't think I could ever do anything right. nearly as grand in public as some of the sins he did. Yeah. Um, but yet when he when his error was pointed out to him, or he when he got over his self-indulgence. Realize what he had done wrong. He always repented. God always forgave. Mm -hmm. As he will us. As he will us. So that is always, always there. All right. So there's, hopefully that gives you lots of ideas of what to pray about. This is not an exhaustive list, by the way. I don't want anyone to think that, well, if it wasn't on that slide, I don't have to pray about it. Because that's just not the case. Right. We just... You know, anything and, everything. anything and everything. That's right. Take it to the Lord. Now, here's an interesting question. How should we pray? Is there a right way to pray? Is there a wrong way? To pray? Well, we already had one example of a wrong way to pray. That was that person who stand up just trying to get attention. So let's look at Luke chapter 18, verse 1, and tie in that for it. He was telling them a parable. To show that at all times they ought to pray and not to lose heart. All right. So it says here, let's start off. Is there a right time to pray? Yes. No. Yes, there is. No, always. Always. <laughs> <laughs> always. <laughs> right. Anytime. <laughs> That's right. When's the best time to pray? Anytime. When you feel the need to pray. That's the best time to pray. <laughs> right. Yeah, you don't even have to feel a need to pray. Just pray. Anytime, just pray. So there's never a wrong time to pray. Right. Right. I mean, now there are wrong ways to pray, but there's not a wrong time to pray. All right. So it says, always pray, not lose heart. Now let's look at Romans 12 12. Jerry, can, can you read this one for us? Yes. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continually, continuing, steadfast in prayer All right so here the, it tells us to continually continuing steadfastly in prayer which means it's it sounds like it's a pretty frequent thing so it's not just once in the morning once at night not just with your meals it's something that you're doing throughout the day i mean how, how good would your relationship with your spouse be if you only talk to them at mealtime <laughs> 
good. Not very good. Now, that would be rough for us. We don't uh, we lunch hardly ever eat together. So it would only be twice a day we could say anything. That would yeah. not go well, right? Not go well at all. All right. So constantly, yeah. anytime, constantly keep praying. Now let's look at Daniel 6 10. Nora, can you read this one? Okay. Daniel 6 10. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went home and in his upper room with his windows open toward Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed and gave thanks before his God, as was his custom since early days. All right, now, Daniel had a habit, prayer habit, and it was known I mean, they laid this trap for him, knowing that he would do this because he did it so much. Everybody knew that, hey, when you see Daniel, he's praying to God. But he would do it morning, he would do it midday, and he would do it evening. So he would get up, he would pray to God. Right? In the middle of the day, he's going to pray to God and get a recharge. In the evening, he would pray to God before he went to bed. So these were three set times during the day. That he had set aside time to talk to God. Now, Daniel's a good example for us. Now, bear in mind that he's not, this is not the only time that he could pray to God, because there's other examples in Daniel where he prays to God at different times of the day. But this is just a personal time that he has set aside specifically for the purpose of prayer. Mm -hmm. And it's a good idea to have that in your life. At some point, whether you do it three times a day, once a day, if you're not doing it at all, I would suggest you start off at least once a day. Pick a time. If you're not sure about it, I mean, don't, don't go crazy and say, I'm going to set aside an hour if you're not doing it at all. Because uh, it's going to be a very long hour. I had people suggest to get like an egg timer, set it for whatever time frame. You say, I'm going to give the Lord 10 minutes. Uh, to start start doing that every day and after a while 10 minutes is not going to be enough time you don't have to bump it up to 15 or 20 All right so give that a try and then it may you may say yeah maybe i should do that multiple times a day i like to do that in the morning uh just helps the rest of the day go well if you start off that way uh, but that's that's one way here now it's again when, how, how should we pray? In this example, we're setting aside time specifically to pray to God, where we've turned off the distractions of the world. And it's just us and God. Now let's look at uh, Daniel 6, 10. We, we just read that. Just did that. Yeah. First Thessalonians. I'm sorry. First Thessalonians. Uh, that's... That's me, isn't it? Yep. Yeah, I know. I'm trying to keep track. Big verse here. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. First Thessalonians 5 17. Such a long one. <laughs> try to get this out in, in one, one reading here without taking a breath. All right. It says, pray without ceasing. Now, what does that mean? Pray without ceasing. Your whole life should be in, uh, an attitude of prayer. An attitude of prayer. I like that. So prayer is more than just verbal communication with God, right? The way you live your life can be a communication with God. Just like you, a married couple. You don't have to be saying I love you all the time. You show it. Your attitude. Show it by your attitudes, your actions, right? So if um, if your spouse lets you use the car to go run an errand, and you give it back to her, and the little the little fuel light's blinking, goes to start up to go to work the next day. Is that saying I love you? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, you just weren't necessarily thinking about her needs at the time you parked that car, right? So 
Praying without ceasing means ongoing communication with God, not just verbally, but through your actions. You should always, always keep that line open. And sometimes you don't have to be saying anything. Right. You don't have to be saying anything at all. All right. Now, how much power, excuse me, how much power does sincere prayer have? And I believe we have already looked at this verse once okay. before. James 5. You've been in James. Oh, yeah, we didn't go down. We reread the two verses before this, verses 14 and 15. So James 5, verses 16 through 18. Oh, read that. Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed earnestly that it would not rain. And it did not rain on the land for three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced its fruit. All right. So how much power did Elijah's prayer have? A lot. <laughs> A lot. Right? Now, the power was not in the prayer itself, but in the power behind the prayer. Right? God. And again, he was praying for the things that was in God's will. So through his prayer, God sent a drought for years and six months. And then again, when it was over and he prayed for the rain, God sent the rain. And the earth produced its fruits. It's very, very powerful. But notice here in verse 16, he's leading off here. It says, confess your trespasses to one another. Now here, this is not telling them to go lay out all your sins to the brethren. If you have trespassed against your brother, you need to confess that to your brother or sister, okay? however, the, whatever the case may be. And then you pray for one another. So pray for each other that you may be healed. And notice that's all part of one sentence. So when someone can, comes and confesses to you, you need to forgive them and you need to pray for them and, and pray for each other. And that heals both of you. And it says the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man fails much. And here it's talking about that spiritual that comes together. Because we have a lot of broken relationships in this world where somebody has wronged somebody or somebody feels like they've been wrong and somebody maybe had doesn't even know that they've done something that uh, you feel was wrong and we need to address it get that taken care of but there's much much power there's an easy one right in whose name should we pray diane you got this one john 14 13 whatever you ask in my name that will i do so that the father may be glorified in this we were to ask in Jesus' name. Jesus name. We always close the prayer to in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And that's not some kind of magical incantation, right? <laughs> we're instructed to do that. We're letting God know, look, we're, don't do this because I ask. Do this because Jesus has instructed me to pray this way. And, and, and your son, <laughs> do it for his sake. Okay? Not my sake. Do it for his sake. So now, does God answer prayers? Well, we already seen a couple examples of that tonight, but let's look. Matthew 7, verses 7 through 11. And Jerry, can you read that for us? All right. Matthew 7, verses 7 through 11. My day. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock and it will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, it will be open. For what man is there among you who, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, he will give him a serpent? If you then, 
being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? All right. Okay. So note he's telling us here, he's rephrasing it several ways, but asking, seeking, knocking, those are all active uh, actions where you're taking, where you're trying to get something. You're asking God. You're looking for it. So when we ask, we pray for something, we ask for it, and then we seek it. We look for it, right? We knock on the door, he'll open it. So sometimes when you ask for something, God is saying, yes, you, but you're going to have to go over here to get this. You're going to have to do this. You have to take some action on that prayer. But he does, he does definitely answer prayers. And notice he makes a comparison. If you being evil... That's kind of, you may think that's a little bit harsh, but we're all sinners, yeah. right? And so yeah. without, without the influence of God, we are naturally evil. But even evil sinners who know nothing of God know how to give good things to their kids. Yeah. So if as evil and fallen as we are, know how to do good things for our children, how could a perfect, all-knowing, loving God, you know, how could he not good things for his children than they had. So yes, he does not only, this tells us not only does he answer prayer, but he wants to answer prayers and he desires to answer prayer. So now let's uh, go to Psalms and Nora, if you can read Psalms 3 verse 4, and if you don't mind after that, if you can also read 40 verses 1 and 2. Okay. I cried to the Lord with my voice, and he heard me from his holy hill. All right, so that tells us that God hears us when we pray. Because sometimes we feel like he just doesn't hear us. Right. God always hears you. And now look, let's look at uh, chapter 40, verses 1 and 2. 41 and 2. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined to me and heard my cry he also brought me up out of a horrible pit out of the miry clay and set my feet upon a rock and established my steps all right so notice here i waited patiently for the lord so was his prayer answered immediately yeah. no no yeah you know, i mean how much patience does it take to if if something is given to you the instant you ask for it you didn't wait yeah. Right. There's no there's no waiting in there at all. But he waited patiently for the Lord. And he says, the Lord heard my cry. And then he brought me up out of a horrible pit. Now, if you read through, of course, uh, the story of David's life, there's lots of times he was being persecuted and chased, pursued, went through some horrible trials. He just. He probably had no idea when when he was going to see the light of day. But yet God always came through for him. And it says, and he set my feet upon a rock and established my steps. So David knew that even in the deepest trials, right, God was there for him. He was listening to him and God would set his feet on that solid rock. When he, everything is falling around and new, around him, he knew that he could still depend on God. Sometimes that's all you got. So now here's something we know we should pray. We've talked about ways we should pray, ways we shouldn't pray, right? things we should pray about, people we should pray for, uh, the fact that God answers prayer. So we know prayer is important. So what are some obstacles that keep God from answering our prayers? You notice we had a lot of texts in James. James had a lot to say about prayer. I love, I love James. Yeah. Yeah. One of my favorite. All right, so I'll read this first one. James 4, verse 3. says, you ask and do not receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your pleasures. All right, so sometimes God doesn't ask our prayers because we're asking for things that are not his will. We're being selfish. We're asking for things to satisfy our own selfish desires or glorify us instead of the things that God wants. 
Now, if, if it's good for you, does God want you to have it? Yes. Absolutely. Right. He, he does not want to withhold any good thing from you. However, if you got a big old head <laughs> and you're asking for something you don't need, but it's just something you want because it may be a temporarily feel good type deal. That's not going to help you. If God gives that to you. It may do more harm than good. All right. But sometimes we're asking for things that we really don't need or aren't good for us. So we have to make sure that we're aligned. Remember that abiding with God. And now things. Well, my, my Bible says, I like this one. You ask and you not receive because you ask with wrong motives. With Ooh. wrong motives. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know if that's it. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. There are people, see people, they may pray for something bad to happen to somebody else. Yeah. You should never pray for something <laughs> bad to happen. Don't ask for God to strike down your enemies. Yeah. Ask God to convert your enemies. <laughs> right. Make them friends. All right, let's look at James 1.6. Nicole. <laughs> you never did. I've kind, of, kind of got a circuit going here. With I want to make sure. The online people being to my... my all right. Okay. James 1 6. But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. Well, that's a tough one. All right. So, so you have to ask in faith. No doubts. So when, when you're asking in faith, what does that mean? You're trusting that it, yeah. he's, he's, God's going to answer it to your. <sighs> According to his will. Thank you. Yeah. I just couldn't find the word I was looking for. You have, when you're asking it in faith, you're giving it to God, you're putting it on his plate, and then you're letting go. Don't be putting it back on your plate. Yeah, don't, wait, wait, don't you say, here, God, I want you to take care of this. I'm going to hold on to it until you're ready. <laughs> right, don't do that. Give it to him. Let it go. Right. God's going to take care of it according to his will, his desires. And it's not always in a way you're going to like. Uh, but it's always what's best. So you have to be able to do that, that faith, and have no doubt that God is going to act. I don't try to put limits on how God's going to act, but God is going to act. Okay. So don't doubt God. And you have to trust him. I know that can be hard. So that's what you got to do. All right, now, Matthew 6, 14 and 15, Tyann, if you could read that for us. For if you forgive others for their transgression, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, then your Father will not forgive your transgression. All right. So this is a big one, too. You sometimes find it hard to pray when you're holding a grudge against somebody. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's because the spirit's working on you, telling you, you know, That's you're not, right. you're not really right in your head right now, mm -hmm. right? You need to get things straight. You need to forgive your brother before you can come ask me for forgiveness. Because I mean, here you're, you're holding a grudge against somebody who's wronged you, and then you're asking God to forgive you for wronging him. That's right. Or if you, if you might start to pray, and you realize that you know. I'm paying for forgiveness for the same sins that this other person's committed that I'm upset about. So you have to forgive other people and their trespasses. All right, Jerry, uh, can you read Psalm 66, 18? All right. Psalm 66, 18. If I regard in what he in my heart, the Lord will not hear. All right. So what does it mean to regard iniquity in your heart? Cherish sin. Cherish sin, something that you're not willing to let go of. Yeah. That you know is wrong. Because it, you, it says you regard iniquity, so you know it's wrong. 
but you continue to do it or hold on to it is you've got to let that go. You've got to let that go because that becomes a stumbling block. Because remember, sin is a separation between you and God. Mm -hmm. right. So if you're holding on to something, cherish sin, you're telling God, this is more important to me than you are. And it, and that makes it very hard for God to work with you. So you gotta, you gotta let that go. All right, and then uh, Proverbs 28, nine, Nora, if you could read that. One who turns away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer is an abomination. Ooh, that's a big one. So turning away your ear from hearing the law, what's that mean? You do not keep it. You're not keeping the commandment. Not only are you not keeping it, you don't even want to hear about it. You're like, <coughs> but that you'll pray to God. So you have people who um, maybe refuse to study the Bible because they're afraid they might learn something. Yeah. And they'll have to change their lifestyle. Yeah. Right. Now, Notice it says when the gospel is going to go out to all the world before Jesus comes. That doesn't mean that everybody is going to take advantage of it. It means that everybody's going to have the opportunity to hear the word. Some will choose to listen. Some will choose not to listen. Some people will ignore the constant opportunities. And because they say, well, I don't want to do that because then I'll have to give something up. And it's their motives. Those people choose not to hear the word. And to, to people like that, it says that even his prayer is an abomination. There is absolutely no power in their prayer. And they might as well be speaking to themselves. All right, so it's very important that you be open to listening to God. And it makes sense if you think about it, this is a two-way street, right? So basically you're you're telling it's it again, we'll use the marriage analogy, right? That you have one spouse who wants to tell everything to the other spouse, but doesn't want the other spouse to ever talk. <laughs> right. I'm going to tell you what I want and then you just be quiet. Yeah. Right. What, what kind of how long do you think that marriage will last? Not very long. <laughs> Not very long. No, in, in some in some cases that that marriage may end in violence. <laughs> it's somebody it may go poorly for somebody. It could. Oh, we, we see lots of news stories about that. And so it's a bad thing. You communication has to be a two way street. If you want to pray to God, you have to listen. To God. Now, what are some conditions for God to answer prayer? So does God give conditions? Always. Always. There's always conditions. Virtually every promise in the Bible, there's a condition to it. Mm -hmm. uh, one notable exception is the promise not to flood the world again. There's no conditions. God just put that rainbow up in the sky and says, I will never flood the world again. It doesn't matter what you do. I'm never going to destroy the, wor the world that way again. Which doesn't really limit God because... If he wanted to, he could destroy the world any way he wants. <laughs> so, but that's a promise. We don't have to worry about that. So let's go look at some conditions for God to answer prayer. We're going to start Matthew 21, verse 22. And Jerry, can you read that? Just read, David. Oh, Jerry, okay. just read? Yeah. All right, Nora. I can read it again if you wish. I just read two. Read you just read two? Yeah, it's, your it's my turn. So oh it's your God. turn. <laughs> all right, for those of you watching, these gray hairs are real. All right. <laughs> no, I'm actually, I've got it. I've turned to it. Matthew 21, 22. All right. Um, I've got to turn the page over. Here we go. It says, and whatever things you ask in prayer, believing you will receive. So what are some conditions we see here? I have to believe. You have, you have to, to believe. believe. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, you have to ask. Yeah. <laughs> you have to ask. And you have to believe. All right. James 4 through. I know we already read it once. Nicole, if you can read it again. Yeah. Straight now. 
I will be for the rest of the screen. <laughs> Yeah, we just read this one. We're going to read it again. Good. Hebrews. Hebrews. Wait, James. I'm in the wrong book. Hold on. I'm glad I stopped. <laughs> yeah, there's some good stuff in Hebrews, yes, too. Yes, there yeah. is. James 4, verse 3. You ask and do not receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your pleasures. You ask wrongly. <laughs> All right, so in this one, a condition for God to answer prayer is that you have to have the right motive. No. Right, your motives have to be pure. So again, praying for God to smite your enemies is not the right <laughs> motive. Right. All right, so now uh, tie in Luke 22, 41 and 42. And he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, and he knelt down and began to pray, saying, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. So what's the condition we see there? Pray for God's will. Pray for God's will to be done. Okay? And God, God will always do God's will. That's what makes him God. Right, he will always do his will. All right, uh, so let's move on to Mark eleven twenty five and Jerry. This time, I'm I'm back in turn again. Okay. Mark eleven twenty five. All right. And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him, that your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. All right, so what's the condition we see here? We need to forgive. We need to forgive. We need to forgive other people. So don't be holding grudges. Okay. Let it go. No, I'm not going to start singing. Luke 18.1. Nora, if you could read that. Then he spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not lose heart. All right, so don't, not lose heart. Not losing heart means, right, don't give up. Which seems to make sense here because if you've given up, you're probably not going to pray anyway. You've just given up. Uh, I like to look at this as, you know, prayer shouldn't be your last resort. Because it says you all, always ought to pray and not lose heart. So... When, when you go to pray, again, have faith. Know that God is with you and trust him. Okay. And now, first, whoops, first John, I was looking at just, um, let me go to first John 3, 22. First John 3, 22. It says, and whatever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. So if we want God to answer our prayer, what do we have to do? Keep the commandments. Keep, the commandments. keep his commandments, right? That goes back to that one where we're getting rid of that cherished sin, right? Do things that are pleasing in his sight. Keep his commandments. So we want to obey God. All right, Nicole. Now we're going to go to Hebrews. Oh, no, Hebrews 11, to... verses 1 and 6. And on this, how is faith described? And then what does that mean for us in regards to prayer? So we're going to read these verses first, and then we'll discuss the questions. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Verse 6 is, but without faith, it is impossible to please him, for he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. All right, so how is faith described in these verses? It's the evidence of things not seen, or? The evidence of things not seen, so it's... Seen. We're, we're putting trust in something that we can't see, but notice that's based on evidence. 
It's not blind. We have evidence for things that we can't see. So God gives us something to support that. And then what else does it say? What did verse six say? About faith. Hmm? It's impossible to please him. It's impossible to please God without our faith. Right. So what does all this mean for us in regards to prayer? So when we pray, we must believe. Yep. You must that believe, it will be right. answered according to his will. You have to have faith. Right? You have to have trust. You have to have that relationship. Right. Because can you have faith in someone you don't know? No. 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 Well, well, you can trust the have faith in a doctor. But yeah. you, well, yeah, it's kind of a blind faith when you first right. go in to see the doctor, when, but it's usually after you've got the relationship. Going. And I'm taking this from going to see with all his cancer visits and everything that we had. Oh, yeah. Those first few visits, you, we, we did just have to take it on like blind faith. That he knew what he was doing, the doctor knew what he was doing. Of course, as we built that relationship with the various doctors, we came to truly believe that they knew what they were doing. <laughs> Yeah, I, I got to trust him way before I let him cut me. Yes. Anywhere. Yeah. I didn't do that. Sometimes you don't have that choice. <laughs> Sometimes I have to do that immediately. Well, you, yeah. you're, you're going into ER. There's not much time for yeah. that. But I, I got to know this man over a period of months. several months right. before, before I had the first surgery. So that was good. All right, so definitely, you got to get to know him. You've got to trust him. Um, and then that will give you power in your prayer. Now, how is faith developed? And this is Tyane. Romans 10, 17. So how do we establish that? It comes from hearing. Hearing by the word of Christ. All right, so faith comes by hearing. What specifically are you hearing? The word, of God. the word of God, right? So by hearing the word of God, and there's various ways you can do that. You can hear the word of God uh, through a sermon. Yep. Yep. You can hear the word of God through Bible study, right. like what we're doing right now, or watching one online. You can uh, hear the word of God in your own personal study, just reading the Bible and mm -hmm. studying it on your own. So there's lots of ways to do that. But every little bit you do that is helping to build that faith. You hear it by other people's testimonies. Mm -hmm. Yes, you do hear other people, how God has worked in their life. Mm -hmm. That's evidence. Right. And remember, God provides evidence. And the evidence we get from here is how he's worked in the past. Right. When you hear someone's personal testimony, that's evidence of how he's still working today. Yeah. So... The evidence of things you haven't seen or can't see. So that's those are all good ways to develop faith. And it takes time. We're nearing the end. So what must I do? All right, so there's four texts here, some things that we can do uh, as far as uh, communication with God. Let's turn to Psalms 55. Verse 17, and Jerry, can you read this one? Okay. Psalms 55, 17. Psalm 55, 17. Evening and morning and at noon, I will pray and cry it aloud, and he shall hear my voice. All right, so notice here, this is kind of, it reminds you of Daniel's habits he had. Now, I'm not going to say you have to do these set times, but you need to set aside a time where you will pray to the Lord. I would recommend doing it more than once, but if you're not doing it all, at least once a day. If, and if you're only doing it once, I would suggest doing it in the morning uh, when you first get up. Now, if you're working third shift, whenever you get up to start your day, whenever you get up to start your day, that's a great time to do it. Uh but we need to get into the habit of doing it throughout the day. All right, so let's look at Matthew 6, 6. And Nora, if you can read that. But you, when you pray, go into your room 
And when you have shut your door, pray to your father who is in the secret place and your father who sees in secret will reward openly, reward you openly. All right, so here, this is, when it says go into your secret place, it's a place uh, or a time where it's set aside, right? It's just you and God. You're shutting out. When you're going in that closet, you're shutting out the distractions of the world. All right, so you need to do that. It's kind of hard to have a conversation with God if you're sitting there uh, going through your, your messages on your, your phone apps or, or if you're sitting here channel surfing. Or even if you're sitting in your own chair but somebody else has got yeah. channel surfing on Yeah, TV. yeah. something up on the TV, yeah. watching the news. Yeah, see, in our house, I get up way before everybody else. So by the time everyone else is up, about, I've got that done. But then Nicole comes out and I'm into my morning routine where I'm getting everything ready for work. I'm watching news. So she goes into the other room. I go into the bedroom. She goes into the other room, free from the distraction. Good. So that she can, she can take care of her own at that point. All right. Uh, so now Matthew 21, 22, and I believe that is me. Matthew 21. Me too. And whatever things you ask in prayer, believing you will receive. So once we've done that, we've set aside a time. We've got a place that's free from the distractions. Now we have to believe in, in God and believe that he will answer these prayers. Right? And then Nicole James 4.3, one this more time. like the third time we've read this. One more time. I want to read from the... Version. You, ask, right. you ask and do not receive because you ask with the wrong motives so that you may spend what you request on your pleasures. All right. So here it's asking for the right motives, making sure that we're praying for God's will and not our own. So if you do those four things, you're going to find uh, that your prayer life is going to, going to kick up and up. And we're coming to the end. I sent out an email. I don't know if everyone got it, but this is a, a good little booklet on prayer I put out by Amazing Facts. Um, you can get it from uh, Amazing Facts website. It's amazingfacts.org. Scroll down to the bottom where it says free book library, and that's where you'll find this. And it has topics. You hit prayer, and this is what pops up. In the email I sent out, I actually sent out the link. You can just yeah. click on the link that's in the email. But for those of you watching uh, online, if you're not on our email list, you didn't get that, you can find it at their website. What's the name of that book? Teach Us to Pray. Yeah, it's a good book. Yeah. All right. Okay. But uh, you got it up there. Yeah, I got it up on the screen for the people who are watching. I wanted, I figured that would be helpful. Um, I know yeah, I've shared I this like, I like the uh, position of the uh, petitions in the Lord's Prayer, the seven petitions in that, yeah. in the little book. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a good little book. Uh, you can download it if you want to, like, save it as a PDF. You can do that. Or you can just read it online. Mm -hmm. uh, you can even access the, their website on the cell phone and read it that way if you like. But I just thought that was worth sharing. All right, so that brings us to the end, our commitment. I believe that God hears and answers prayers. Can we all agree with that? Yes. Yes, yes. God hears and answers prayers. And I will pray with faith every day. Amen. Can we all commit amen. to that? All right, amen. amen. So next time, next Friday, and hopefully some of our Regulars will be back next week. We understand where they are this week. Uh, join us as we study Christ's second coming. Are you going to be here? Yeah. Yeah. It's just like it's just Saturday we're, we're going to be gone because we've I, got I, it's something we do every year. We're not going to be here. Huh. Yeah, we're just yeah, we're just not here. All right. And uh, as always, of course, let me just minimize this because I know this will block. 
There we go. If you're watching this online, you want more information on this Bible study or other studies we've done in the past, if you have a prayer request, or if you want to get on the, the email list, there's my email. Just send me an email, elderbobwall at gmail.com. Let's close it out with a word of prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the guidance you provided in your word. We thank you for the gift of the spirit that you send to be with us, to give us understanding as we study the word. We thank you so much, Lord, that you not only are available to hear our prayers, but that you desire to hear our prayers and you long to answer them. We ask, Lord, that you will be with us as we go through the changes in our lives. We develop a prayer priority. Lord, send the spirit to guide us, help us to establish that time, and that place. We can focus on you. Thank you for asking these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, well, thank you so much for joining us tonight. And I hope to see you all.